The First Government of the United States, the Articles of Confederation. As the Second Continental Congress was meeting during the Revolution, they realized a need to establish a government to run the United States once their country had won their independence from England. As soon as Lord Cornwallis surrendered to George Washington at Yorktown, Virginia, the new government began to run the country. Because there was no other government of the people in the world in 1781, the Second Continental Congress had no examples to use as they tried to set up their own. What may have been more important was what they knew that what they didn't want. They didn't want a government with a strong central government given that they had just successfully had a revolution against that form of government. They made the decision to make the power of the states greater than the power of the central government. The first government of the United States was under the Articles of Confederation. All of the responsibilities for running the government were with the Congress, with no executive or court system to lead the nation or deal with conflicts between citizens in different states or citizens and the government. States could send as many representatives as they wanted to the Congress under the Articles, but each state had only one vote. This gave every state, regardless of how many people lived in that state, equal power in the government. The representatives of many states did not bother showing up for meetings of the Congress, making its ability to make decisions almost impossible. The national government did not have the power to raise money on their own by taxing their people or placing a tax on goods imported into the United States. In order to get money to pay for the running of the government or the soldiers in the army, nine of the 13 states in the Congress had to approve a request for money from the states. Not only did this number make it almost impossible for the national government to raise money, but also the states did not have to honor or listen to these requests and did not have to send any money to the national government. States also controlled all foreign trade that came through the nation, taking away one more way for the national government to raise money. With no way for the national government to earn money to pay off any debt, the states were required to pay off their own debts with no help from the national government. Some states decided to print money, which caused a great deal of inflation. Eventually, the saying, not worth a continental, became a common expression heard around the new states as printed money became worth less and less. For states that did not print their own money, they had to raise taxes. This more often than not hurt those who did not have a great deal of money to begin with, mostly farmers. Massachusetts made matters even worse when they required that all taxes be paid for in hard currency, meaning gold. This was because paper money was not worth anything. In coastal cities like Boston, this was not a problem. But on the interior, where the vast majority of people were farmers who depended on banks for any money that they had, this was a problem. When the farmers could not pay their taxes on their land, the state was forced to foreclose on their property. Farmers in western Massachusetts decided that they could no longer allow this to happen and, under the leadership of Daniel Shays, a former Revolutionary War captain, marched on the Springfield Armory, took what weapons were there, and headed for the state courts in an effort to close them down. Eventually, the governor had to call out the state militia and chase the farmers back to their farms. What Shays' Rebellion did was to point out the bigger problems with the national government under the Articles of Confederation. Because this was hurting business interests in the states, delegates from five states met at Annapolis, Maryland, to discuss ways to change the Articles of Confederation and improve the business prospects of the nation. This meeting was called the Annapolis Convention, but did not have nearly enough representation from all of the states, and so the group decided to meet again the next spring in Philadelphia and invite delegates from more of the states to join them in an effort to fix the Articles of Confederation.